welcome to another video so in this particular video we are going to look at another buffer overflow attack on windows system and i am going to target one of the dvd player basically again these players are pretty common most of the people use for playing different videos mp3 and all those things right again the reason i am not choosing any remote target or when i say remote like any exploit that you can run from a remote system because I have first thing is I have already make a video on mini share uh, I think in my buffer workflow series video you can go ahead and check it and the other thing is like most of the time these kind of remote attack or remote exploit doesn't work uh, the only reason being is there are multiple different character in between things like your firewall or even IDS IPS and so many different things or different characters are in between whenever you are running a remote exploit so in 90% of cases uh, you might not see that a remote exploit will work successfully except the POC but in again the same way most of the time whenever you are uh, having some of the local exploit when I say local exploit like somebody has to click on or download a particular file and the attacker get basically the remote shell right so that particular thing is possible uh, in the modern system now so in this particular example as i said we are be using utilizing dvd x player i will be using the same immunity debugger again this time around i will be using mona.py to perform some of the operation uh, which will be really interesting for you if you are new to this buffer overflow series and yeah i have already made a video on buffer overflow and with cpu instruction all those things so you can go ahead and watch the video i will put the link in the description in this particular video i am going to try to perform this buffer overflow attack within 15 minutes right so i'll try as my best uh, to complete this buffer overflow within 15 minutes and uh, successfully compromise the system or maybe successfully develop the payload now please note that i'll be going through things really faster so if you need help or anything just pause the video or you can go back forward whenever or whatever you need and in return, definitely i will uh, tell what all comments that i have uh, about a particular payload or different command that I am doing basically. So let's have a look at the exploit first. So this is like DVD X player that I am utilizing. So it's like .plf file buffer overflow. So .plf is nothing but a playlist file. Uh, and uh, yeah, it says like in Windows 7 basically, but I am going to try this over buffer overflow attack on Windows 10. Now in Windows uh, 10, there are different security protection mechanism like DEP, which is by default on. So you need to add this particular program to the exception list for the proof of concept. Now in future, we will see how to like beat this uh, DAP prevention or things like even your ASLR or even drop chaining and even SEH. So those are upcoming video. Do let me know in the comment box if you want me to make video on those kind of topic. So this is the pretty simple exploit, but I'll be not utilizing. And to be honest, I'm just going to try out this exploit right away. I have not done anything on this particular exploit just to make myself test again i am just doing it so i have not run this particular exploit before so let's see how whether it will work or not so let me just go ahead and quickly install this and then i will come back to this particular video all right so we have just downloaded this dvdx exploit uh, i think with the final exploit that is provided and then i'm going to utilize my this dvd.py which is basically a simple python file and let's have a look at the timer it's now 350 so we should be able to complete within like 18 minute or the total video length is going to be either 18 minute or 19 minute. So let's get started. So the first thing if you could see this, I'm just creating a PLF file, dvd.plf file, and I'm just creating with 800 number of A. And I will just simply save it and click on run. Now as soon as I run, a .plf file has been created. And this is how the dvd.plf file look like. Let me just put this in pin text bar because we need multiple time to you know open the file again and again so i'll just go ahead and open playlist and this is how the, our file is and next let me just start immunity debugger now as soon as the immunity debugger start this is the window that you are going to see basically and i'm just click on this attach file and select this dvd x player now let me click on attach now this particular file uh, is in running state so we'll just wait for a couple of minutes to pause and then we'll resume it so it is in pause state now i'll click on run and let's just go ahead and select this particular dvd file now if everything goes well our eip should overwritten with 4141 right now as you can see eip is overwritten with uh, like 414141 41. now let's go ahead and calculate the like the size of the buffer and control try control the elf or try control sorry the eip file uh, eip register right so again i'm going to use this mona and pattern 
underscore create okay again you can use this metasploit one create pattern another thing that will also work now it must have created so if you could see that it has created the pattern it says like return to this uh, pattern.txt uh, since i'm using this my window so i'll be storing this inside this c drive only so let me go to this mona output and dvd x player and this is where my pattern has been created so let me simply copy this particular thing and try send it via my python program so again i will go back to my python program and uh, yeah let me go quickly open it so instead of a let me just use the pattern that i created again we need to remove this 800a because we just created the same thing again simply save it f5 or you can just simply click on run so it has starting again and then start the immunity meantime so once the immunity started i'll just go ahead and open playlist and the meantime i'll just go ahead and attach the file or it is the program dvd x player so it should again attached yeah this is the only thing that takes like bit of time let me wait for this come to in running state depending on run this time this, this thing sometimes take time right so it is again running so let's just go ahead and select the dvd play file and we should expect a crash right so the crash is at eip 376 uh, 94316 so let me just go ahead and select this particular register value and then say mona and i will say pattern underscore offset right and just provide the value it should be telling me where the uh, eip is so it says like the buffer length is uh, 260 and we should be able to control the eip from there so let's just go ahead and uh, modify the exploit again we are going to do the same exercise so instead of this i'm going to say that 260 number of a and plus again i will say some bbbb the usual one and let's just fill with um, like knob character right and i'll say slash x 90 into 20 right so just for simply testing purpose let me just go ahead and click on run the module uh, okay we just had a small issue here mm -hmm. okay what is the, what is the issue okay it's just due to this particular file was written let me no problem let's just go ahead and run it again so if i click on run it should create the file again so let me just go ahead and start the same program again expand the register and simply go ahead and select the playlist file again for some people as i said it might be slight bit faster so you should be able to pause anywhere and just revisit the particular video to follow the steps i'm just attaching the program again which might take some time all right let's wait for this to run so it's running again so let's go ahead and select the particular file and open it should crash with 42 42 42 as expected right so it's again 42 42 so we can now just have the control now next task for us is to basically uh, provide the jump esv value uh, to this eip register value now in order to do that we need to figure out one of the module that contains jump esp and again has not like esl adapt and all those control right so let me use the same mona uh, like py again which is the extension and i will say yeah hyphen or uh, simple modules right okay modules and hyphen o this will just show me all those modules those are available it will again take some time so let's just wait so if you could see that there are multiple modules those are available and i'm going to select one of them which is having all false um, it could be anything right so i'm just taking this one uh, configuration.dll which is having all uh, csa psl adapt all those things as in uh, like for false now within this configuration.dll i have to figure out one jump psp again so i'll be utilizing the same mona script so i'll say mona hyphen sorry jump esp jump hyphen return to esp register and i'm going to specify the modules to be configuration.dll so it's configuration.dll okay and we should get some jump psv value from this particular uh, configuration.dll it, again it will take some time which is fine looks like i just retyped anyway so if you could see that uh, there are 16 pointers that this particular uh, modules has i mean this particular module has jump psp instruction let me just go ahead and expand it right so we'll be selecting one of them the same thing i just ran it double time 
So we'll be utilizing this particular register value uh, in order to perform the. Okay, there's some background noise. All right, so let's just go ahead. So if you could see that, I will just copy this register address, six zero three seven something, right? So, and go to this my main uh, program, and I'll just uh, provide my uh, register value. So again, you could see that I have used this import struct basically to use this register. You can also type in reverse order, but I'll be simply using a small command for reversing. So going back here, I am just going to uh, change this register value to whatever I have copied and simply pasted it, nothing else. So I just added jump PSV value to be struct.pack and this particular value, right? And so the next task for me is to provide the ESP register value over here or jump ESP and uh, then basically I just want 90 of null character and then I just want to put the shell code. Again, the shell code I have already uh, kept here. So let me just go ahead and open it. And uh, yeah, I'll just simply copy this shell code value. Sometimes you need to keep this kind of automation ready with you, right? Just to make the things faster. So our shell code is ready. Everything is ready and we should get an uh, exploit running. Let me just click on F5. Okay, it is due to this. Just close it. That's fine. Let's go back, save it again, and or simply click on F5. So it's the file has been created, and I'm super confident that this particular exploit will work. So no need to attach the immunity debugger. Of course, you can attach the immunity debugger, set a breakpoint, and you can also analyze it. So I'll just go ahead and simply click on this file. Again, just for the like like purpose, or just let me just go ahead and open the immunity debugger just to show you guys, okay? And uh, yeah, let me just click on expand, attach, and click on this DVD uh, player, right? And we'll also set the breakpoint here uh, so that it will be more uh, like more in, uh, good for you for just to analyze another thing. So I'll just simply click on this particular register value. Okay, maybe I'll just simply click on this. Control G, follow this register value. Okay, this is the where uh, we have a jump PSP. Sometime it works in one go, sometime it doesn't. Just click on F2 and this will set the breakpoint right there. And I'll simply allow this program to run and I'll just go ahead and select the uh, this particular file or the DVD or play playlist file. Okay, so I'll just simply click on this. Now note that this particular instruction has been hit because it has just flagged. And if you see that this particular jump PSP so I'll again uh, click on uh, running. You can also type this, go to debug and see, click on this uh, like F9. If you want the like step also, you can click on F7. Let me click on F7. So it's again pointing to the snope uh, as we have planned earlier. And I'll just simply click on running next and see. So you could see that the exploit has been uh, like planted successfully and it is running. And we could see the command prompt directly visible. So this is the simple way of creating the buffer overflow. And this is how the program looks like as we just crafted the payload using some of the Mona uh, for utilizing to make it fast. So I believe I just completed within 15 minutes. I think it's 12 to 13 minutes, uh, even less than that, but that's fine. So I hope you would have liked this particular video. Do let me know in the comment box if you have any queries. This is just another second buffer overflow that we just uh, did on one of the system. So if you want me to make video on SLR dev bypass or even Linux buffer overflow or things like, uh, you know, SCH bypass or so many different things, we can just make it. So thanks for watching. Have a nice time. Do let me know your query if you have anything. Again, I have used a faster method. But anyway, I hope you would have got the point or idea. Thanks for watching. Have a nice time. Bye-bye.